Hello, IDEA students. So you are doing a very unique lab today where you are learning how to clean up data, which is something that data scientists spend a lot of time doing. So right now you are probably here on this slide where it's you're asked to write a script. So that's what this video is going to show you how to do, to write a script that will load the dirty data set, um, uh, clean it up, and then save a copy. So, so you started off with this dirty data set here. And so again, right now it should look like this, where you've kind of, cl you've cleaned it up. I know what, we know what the variable names represent. Um, and it's more descriptive, the structure's correct now. So um, the first thing is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna explain the why we do an R script, the importance of doing an R script, and then I'll show you the how to create an R script. So first of all, right now this cleaned up data set that you have exists only here in the environment. So if for some reason it gets swept off the environment, all your work is done. This no longer exists. Like if you try to code some, if you try to make a, a histogram or um, a dot plot of age, um, and then you do data equals ATU underscore cleaner, you're going to get an error message. It's going to say the file does not exist. So, um, so what I've done here is I've, I've all the codes that you use to clean up the data, I've saved them into an R script. So I'm going to go here to my files tab and notice that there's this document that's, that has dot R in it that indicates that it's an R script. You've, you've seen CSV dot CSV with the, with data from your participatory sensing campaigns. So what this opens up is this document here. Again, this is an R script. And notice if, if I, as I scroll, these are all the codes that you used in the lab. And so the first, the first one, obviously you load your lab, um, you load the dirty data set. Um, and I, I need to do that because it's not in my environment right now. Um, so then this line of code here is the one that and you know, that renamed the variables. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this run. Um, and basically all it did is just took this code and pasted it down here. So see, I'll, it's, so instead of you typing directly on the console, you're typing your code onto this R script and then you hit run. The, the cursor could be at the beginning of the line of code or at the end, it doesn't matter. It could even be in between. Um, so let, let, let me show you. So, um, so right now, this your cleaner data now. So we have the, the variables renamed. Let me run the next line of code. And let me show you. So if I put it at the end and run, that'll it'll recode. So actually, that, that can, I can see that here. So it made sleep, homework, socializing into num numerical. I changed the structure, right? Because before it was, they were characters. Okay, so then let's look at, oh, let me show you. I could put the my cursor right in the middle and run the code and that one was the recoded the uh, male and female let's look at it really quick um see gen it recorded the gender male and female so i'm just gonna finish running off the rest of that and there we go now i have my my it, it exists here again in my environment um so here's the thing, like again, if it gets swept off your environment, you're gonna have to go back and then now rerun all of these lines of code. So um, on the last, on the next slide in your um, in your lab, it's gonna give you these other these two codes over here. So this one is just you're renaming um, ATU um, cleaner as ATU clean. But then this last line of code, that's the one that's really important, where you're telling it to save your file as an RDA file, R data file. So let me show you what that does in essence. So I ran those two lines of code. And so again, I, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. So I'm going to sweep that off. Um, and so now I don't have to go back and rerun all of these codes to, to get my cleaned up data. Uh, what this last line of code did here is it created an R data file here on my files tab. And so I'm just gonna click on it and then that's gonna ask me if I wanna load it onto environment. I do, and there it is, my 
cleaned up data set is there now. So there's no need to rerun the script. It's just a matter of, of loading it from here. Okay. So in essence, that's why a script is super important for this lab. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create an R script. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go here. I'm going to go to this plus sign and then there's R script. I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up this untitled R script. And so word of advice, if R scripts, if you don't save your R script and for some reason your session crashes, um, then you're going to lose it. So my recommendation is to name it right away. And so, um, I, again, you're cleaning the lab. So make the, the name descriptive of what uh, the work that's in that script. So now it's over here. It, it exists down here in my files. And so rather than right, you could type code right onto your script. But what I did is I went to my history tab, right? Cause that's where I have all my, the code that I've written. And so let's see. So you could just, uh, well, the first thing you had to do was load your dirty data set. So I, I highlighted it. And since my cursor's here, I just can go to source and it'll paste it here to my R script. So let me do that with the, the next one to source. Now what, this is what's nice about an R script also. Um, when you're typing in your console, you, you're pretty much just doing one long line of code. In an R script, it allows you to do, um, to separate your code into separate lines. So see, to me, this is super helpful because then, it, first of all, I'm not having to scroll all the way over, but secondly, like it's very clear as to what's happening here. I'm, I'm creating a new file called ATU Cleaner, a new data frame. And so what I'm doing, so that file basically is just the, a, a copy of the ATU dirty data, right? It's just a copy of it. And I'm renaming the variables. Um, so V V1 is now going to be age, V2 is going to be gender, so on and so forth. It's pretty clear. And then if I wanted to go back and change one of my variable names, maybe I want to shorten homework to, you know, um, um, HW or socializing. I want to rename it socialize. It's easy to go back and do it here and then rerun that line of code. So it makes it just easier. Um, something else that's nice about scripts is you can take notes. Um, so like this code renames the variables. Um, so something's going to happen here shortly. Let me move my cursor and wait for that to happen. Um, okay. So it's, oh, there. So notice that I got this little X here. So the whole the reason that happened is because a script is the main purpose of a script is for code, right? This isn't code. The computer doesn't recognize this as valid code. There's no functions of, of any kind. So it gives me a little X. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little hashtag there to tell the computer, Hey, these are notes to myself. You could even put notes within code, um, renaming, you know, a, you know, V1 age, so on and so forth. Um, so, and when I run my, like if I run this again, let's rerun that and then rerun this code, right? It won't give you an error message. It'll, it'll paste the, you know, your notes there, wherever. Oh, I thought it would. That's fine. Um, but no, no error messages. So, and something else, um, let's say I put an extra closing parentheses for some reason or other. And so what'll happen there is again, it'll alert you to some, there's an unexpected, uh, close parenthesis on this line. And so, oh, okay. So that's very helpful in terms of hints as to something is wrong in your code. And so, so that's how you create an R script and this auto saves. Um, but you know, it's still good, a good idea to, to save as you go. So I hope this little tutorial helped.